Hello, my name is Blake Nowinski, and today I'm going to show you how to use the CSLA Quick Start. Once you have CodeSmith Explorer or CodeSmith Studio open, underneath the Template Explorer, find CodeSmith Samples, Frameworks, CSLA, the Quick Start. Right click that and select Execute. You will see a bunch of various properties in the Properties Grid. We will now choose the Source Database property. Select Pet Shop. Now various properties were automatically populated, like the clean expression. The clean expression will remove any string from the table or, or column names based on the regex you supply. The ignore expressions will remove any database table that you don't want to be generated. In this case, it will remove any system diagrams or ASP.NET membership tables. You can also specify dbo.product to exclude the Pet Shop products table and no relationships related to the products table will be generated. You can also specify if you want C Sharp or VB, if you want to launch Visual Studio, and the out path that you want the templates to be generated to. You can also specify the solution name, project name, or data project name. You also have the choice if you want to use member backing fields for all your variables. There is a slight performance increase if you use this, but the code will be overall much cleaner if you do not. By default, you have four choices for the data access implementation. You have an option to don't generate anything at all. You also have the choice to generate parameterized SQL or SQL start procedures. Now there is a distinct difference between the parameterized SQL and the object factory parameter as SQL. Any option which says, you know, is prefixed with object factory, it will generate the data access in a different assembly and add the object factory attribute onto all of your generated classes. You can also change the isolation level of your start procedures or auto automatically execute the start procedures if you choose that option. The parameter prefix goes onto all of your parameterized um, SQL or your stored procedure prefix. By default we use lazy loading. This is highly recommended. So now we are ready to generate. We'll click on generate. As you can see the pet shop project was generated and it opened up Visual Studio. You can notice that there is no generated code. For this to happen you need to go up to the build menu and build a project or hit F5. When the following dialog comes up, please click. As you can see, we have a collections folder, commands folder, criteria folder, entities folder, and a utility folder. All of your lists will go into the collections folder. All of your commands will go in the commands folder. By default, your, we generate an exists command, which will go to the database and see if a record exists. All, all of your criteria classes will go in your criteria folder and all of your entities will go in your entities folder. We also generate an uh, ADO helper utility class and we put that in your utility folder. We are now going to go take a look at the category business base class. As you can see we have a partial class which is not generated and we have two generated classes, a data access and a dot generated class. When you choose object factory you will not have this data access class. If you're going to customize the class at all you'll need to put all your customizations into this class. By default we generate validation rules and authorization rules for it. You should place all your customizations in this class. The data access partial class contains all the data access logic. In the CSLA 2.0 templates we moved all of the data access into the business object as requested by most of the community. As you can see, this is using parameterized SQL. We also have a .generated class which contains all of your business properties and factory methods. One interesting thing I want to show you that goes above and beyond a clean expression and a ignore expression is by default we provide an, a way for you to rename all of your classes and column names very easily and quickly. As you can see in this case, we have a description property. 
But if you take a look at the, the schema, which is the pet shop database, category table, the column name is actually just D E S C N. We do this by a mapping file, which can be found in the common folder of the CSLA directory. All you need to do is right click this and edit. As you can see, we added D E S C N and we give it a value of description and we have ID as identification. You can edit these values on a per project basis by placing the templates in with the project or you can copy this keyword rename alias mapping file to your mapping directory and that will be found globally and used. Now let's say we don't want this products list to be included in the category generated and we say we don't want the products table to be used anywhere in our solution. We can do this by updating the ignore expression. First, we will delete the product list. And we will delete the, the product business object. We will double click this. And we will go into our ignore expressions and add the products table. Next, we'll come down here and make sure it's not selected. And hit OK. OK. And right click this and go to Generate. As you can see, our category business object was regenerated and the products association was not generated. Now let's say you wanted to add a read-only category class. We'll go and show you how easy that is to do. We'll go into manage outputs, we'll click this, come down here and you can see all your business object types. In this case we'll, we will want to use a read-only root and all we have to do is select the category table and by default we add a read-only child list and you can go in here and deselect if you do not want to use a category read-only list. Okay. I click it and go to generate. And as you can see by default we give the read-only class an info suffix. And all of the properties are read-only. I'll now show you how to have even more control on a case-by-case -case basis for your business object types. Now if we go into manage outputs and we're going to remove this category table from the read-only root collection. Hit OK. Now we're going to add an output for our business object. There. Now these are all the master templates. These are the ones you're going to want to select. You, the only one you're not going to want to select is the entities.cst, which is the main master template that we were just in. Inside this internal folder is all the sub templates. So in this case, we're going to choose a read only root. We're going to choose the category table once again. And we will call it category with no product list. And then we can add our ignore expression to ignore the products table once again. And we'll click OK. And when we generate this, we should see a read only category business object with no products child. As you can see with the generated code, when you go this route, you will also need to add your own criteria classes to the generation. So we're going to go back to manage outputs and add another template for the criteria class. We're going to want to select category and give this a name of category with no product list.
select OK. OK. And now when we regen, everything should compile. As you can see, the criteria class was found and it was generated. And we are good to go. So you can see you have complete control over the entity types that are generated, all the relationships that are generated, as well as renaming and ignoring certain columns and tables. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Over the next couple of weeks, we will be releasing more videos on how to use the CSLA templates. They include the data access layer, unit tests, extending, and using the templates in depth.